हेलो गेट एस्पिरेंट्स वेलकम टू पार्ट ट्वेल्व ऑफ गेट सॉलिड स्टेट फिजिक्स सीरीज क्वेश्चन नंबर वन चूज द ग्राफ दैट बेस्ट डिस्क्राइब्स द वेरिएशन ऑफ डायलेक्ट्रिक कांस्टेंट विथ टेंपरेचर इन फेयर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक मटेरियल सो टी सी इज क्यूर टेम्परेचर सो वेन टेम्परेचर इज लेस दैन टी सी देन दैट मटेरियल विल बिहेव एज फेयर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक मटेरियल एंड वेन टेम्परेचर इज ग्रेटर दैन टी सी इट विल बिहेव एज पैराइलेक्ट्रिक मटेरियल नो फॉर फेरो इलेक्ट्रिक मटेरियल इनिशियली डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट इंक्रीजेस अप टू इट रीचेस इट्स क्रिटिकल टेम्परेचर बिकॉज देर इज इंक्रीज ऑफ पोलराइजेशन अराइजिंग फ्रॉम इजी ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ दोज डायपोल्स एंड अबाउट ई सी द इंक्रीज इन थर्मल एनर्जी और थर्मल डिसऑर्डर इट रिजल्ट इन इंक्रीज ऑफ डिक्रीज ऑफ डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट सो यर डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट विल डिक्रीज सो ऑप्शन ए इज करेक्ट next question number 3 as shown in the figure x ray diffraction pattern is observed obtained from a dielectric chain of atoms p and q the diffraction condition is given by a cos theta is equal to n lambda where n is the order of diffraction peak here a is the lattice constant and lambda is wavelength of the x rays assume that atomic form factors and resolution of the instrument do not depend on theta then intensity of the diffraction peak is Now this portion, if this is a, then this portion will be a by two, and this is a by two, then this part will be the path difference. So path difference is equal to a by two into cos theta. But in the question that is given, a cos theta is equal to n lambda. So this will be n lambda by two. Now let us see conditions for maximum and minima. So for minima, we have this path difference. It has to be multiple of lambda by two. so sum m lambda by 2 which is equal to n lambda by 2 so m will be n so all so basically this has to be odd multiple n lambda by 2 so all the values are possible all values of n are possible if it is odd then it is fine so that means this n has to be odd for minima then for maxima we have path difference is equal to so for that purpose we have n lambda by 2 and this has to be equal to 0 lambda 2 lambda and so on and here in this case it has to be equal to lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 5 lambda by 2 and so on so n should be odd and here n has to be even so here n will be even so for maxima n should be even and for minima n should be odd so lower for or then intensity depends on amplitude right so if it is maxima then intensity will be large and if it is minima intensity will be small so it will be lower for odd values of n when compared to even values of n so option b is correct next question number 4 as shown in the figure the two metal semiconductor junctions are formed between an n type semiconductor s and metal m the work function of s and m are phi s is it and phi m and here it is given that phi m is greater than phi s the iv characteristics of the junctions is best represented by so this is given to us now if it is suppose this is the case Phi m is greater than phi s, and it is n type semiconductor. Then in that case, if phi m is greater than phi s, then it will be a short key junction. So it will be short key junction, and that means it will behave as rectifier. And if phi m is less than phi s, then in that case, it will be ohmic junction. And if it is ohmic junction, then it will behave as resistor. So this is for n type, and if it is p type. Then, if phi m is greater than phi s, then it will be ohmic junction, and it will behave as resistor. And if phi m is less than phi s, then it will be short key junction, and it will behave as rectifier. So here we have this case. It will behave as rectifier, and that means here since it is n-type, so this semiconductor it will 
it will act as n type donor and the metal will act as acceptor so this will be the case so for short key junction this is correct so option a is correct next question a two dimensional square lattice has lattice constant a k represents the wave vector in reciprocal lattice the coordinates kx ky of reciprocal space where band gaps can occur are so it is two dimensional square lattice so the brillouin zone will look like this first brillouin zone will be square this is origin so this part will be pi by a this will be minus pi by a minus pi by a and here plus pi by a for the second brillouin zone it will go from here so this will be second brillouin zone Now here it is asked where will where can we have a band gap? So band gap will be in this Brillouin zone. So this is first Brillouin zone and this will be second Brillouin zone. So all the values between pi by a to this two pi by a. So all these values are fine. So for those values we can give band gap. So b is correct. Pi a plus minus pi a. Pi a upon pi upon one point three a. So that is also in that region. This is also fine, and this part as well. So all the three options are correct. Condition is that this this should be in this region, shaded region. Shaded region, as in mean I I mean this line. So on this line there are, there is band gap. So plus minus pi by a. So that means this line, correct? So this point will be plus minus pi by a plus minus pi by a. And when it is pi upon one point three a, again then that then it will be on this horizontal line. And for option D, it will be on this vertical line. So on those lines, uh, we'll get band gaps. Next question number thirty eight. The free energy of a ferromagnet is given by this expression. Where F not A not and B are positive constant and M is the magnetization, T is the temperature, and T C is the Curie temperature. The relation between M square and T is. So we have this expression. Let us calculate D F by D M. So first term is constant. Then we have A not, then T minus T C, M square that will be two M plus four B M cube, and that will be equal to zero. So that will be minus two a naught t minus t c into m is equal to this will be four b m cube. So next is we can take this m square on one side. So this will be minus two a naught t minus t c upon four b. Is equal to m square. Now the graph of m square versus t. So m square is equal to this will be minus two a naught upon four b into t minus minus plus two a naught t c by four b. So it is of the form y is equal to m x plus c, and it will be a straight line, and with slope minus. So slope will be negative. So option b is correct. M square versus t will be straight line with negative slope. Next question, as shown in figure, inverse magnetic susceptibility is plotted as a function of temperature for three different materials in paramagnetic states. Curie temperature of ferromagnetic material is Tc. Nil temperature of anti-ferromagnetic material is Tn. Choose the correct statement from the following. Now, for paramagnetic material, chi is equal to C by D. That means one upon chi will be T by C. So one upon chi versus t that will be a straight line, and it will be passing through origin. That means two is paramagnetic material. 
So two is paramagnetic material. Then for ferromagnetic material, we have chi is equal to C upon T minus T C. That means one upon chi is equal to it will be T by C minus T C by C. So T by C minus T C by C. So it is having negative intercept, negative y intercept. So that means this third will be. So this will be the case. One by chi is equal to T by C. So it will be having positive slope. That is fine, and it will have negative intercept. So next is antiferro. So for antiferro case, chi is equal to C upon T plus T n, and that is equal to one upon chi is equal to T by C plus T n by C. So this one will be antiferro, and third will be this. This third will be ferro, and one will be antiferro. So option A is correct. Next, consider an atomic gas with number density n is equal to 10 raised to 20 meter per meter cube. In the ground state at 300 Kelvin, the valence electronic configuration of atom is F7. The paramagnetic susceptibility of gas is chi is equal to m into 10 raised to minus 11. The value of m rounded off to two decimal places is. First of all, let us see. Since it is in F state, so it will be. This is zero. Then we have one, two, and three. Minus one, minus two, and minus three. So there are seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that means S is equal to summation over S I. That will be half 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 into seven times. So half into seven. So that will be seven by two. Similarly, we can calculate L. So L is equal to summation over this ML values. That is minus three plus minus two plus minus one plus zero plus one plus two plus three. So that will be zero. So J is equal to L plus S. So zero plus seven by two. That will be seven by two. Now we have Landau G factor. G is equal to one plus J, J plus one, plus S, S plus one, minus L, L plus one, upon two J, J plus one. Now since L is equal to zero, this will be two times and two by two that will be one. So G is equal to one plus one that is equal to two. And we have K is equal to For paramagnetic material is equal to n mu naught mu b square upon three kbt into g square j into j plus one. So that will be n is number density is ten raised to twenty mu naught is four pi into ten raised to minus seven mu b is given nine point two seven four Into ten raised to minus twenty four, the whole square. Into g square, that is two square. Into j is seven by two. Seven by two plus one is nine by two. Whole thing upon three into k b is one point three eight zero seven into ten to the power minus twenty three. Into temperature is three hundred Kelvin. So after solving this, we get k is equal to Five point four eight into ten to the power minus eleven. So here value of m will be five point four eight, and the answer range for this question is five point four zero to five point five zero. So these were all the questions from solid state physics part in K twenty twenty one paper. If you like this video, please give it thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Keep learning.